Hi everyone, my team ID is SG3010 and my team name is Roger. From the team ID and the team name, you can probably deduce that, number one, I'm from Singapore, and number two, the only member in my team consists of this guy named Roger. I'm honoured to be making this presentation for all of you, and I hope that the little bits of knowledge that I'm about to share with you will be useful and worth your time and attention. I have done some co space robotics before, because prior to this, I participated in the IQ challenge. Now, the category I'm participating in is the U19 Grand Prix. The basics for doing Grand Prix can all be found in the guiding videos that were emailed to us at the start. So the problems that I've investigated that I'm going to be sharing with you today are more regarding the optimizations for robots. These are not um, essential features in the sense that because any robot can still complete the tasks without these methods that, are that I shall be sharing. However, these methods allowed me to cut down on my robot's runtime, so I'm sure all of you would appreciate it too. So the problems that I investigated are, firstly, how to integrate PID control into the line tracking code, and secondly, how to push speed while maintaining stability. The result is a better optimized run that is obviously more smooth. I'm sure everyone who has done the warm-up challenges and the preliminary rounds would know. The mission for Grand Prix is to find the fastest way to move from the start point to the end point, while passing through all the orange waypoints. The challenge task can essentially be broken down into three mini-tasks. The overall mission will be solved when these three tasks are put together. So the first problem that I investigated is how to integrate PID control into line tracking. PID control is a very powerful method for controlling systems, used often even at the industrial level. First, let me get some terminologies. What we call the ideal state is what we want to achieve. In our case, we ideally want our robot to be in the center of the line that it is following. So, being in the center of a line is our ideal state. Now, after we have established an ideal state, there will be error states. For example, when a robot is on the right side of the line instead of the center of the line, we call it an error state. Finally, a response is an action that can be taken to minimize the error states. For example, when our robot is on the right side of the line, we want to take the action of turning left, so the robot will travel closer to the center of the line, which is our ideal state. So the general idea of a control system is to introduce a response at the right time to achieve the ideal states and to avoid the error states. Now, PID control is just one special type of control system whereby we decide a response based on how big the error is which is called P control and we also decide the response based on looking at how much the system has been deviating from the ideal state in the past which is called I control and um, lastly we also decide the response based on how much the system is expected to deviate from the ideal state in the immediate future, which is called D control. Just in case you're wondering, why do we choose these three alphabets, P, I, and D? Well, they are not chosen randomly. I can tell you that P stands for proportion, I and D stands for integral and derivative, but um, it is beyond the scope of this presentation to go any more in depth than that. So if you're really interested, I would really encourage you to find out more about it online. Anyways, for my robot, I only used P control and D control. The advantage of P D control is that it allows line tracking to be a lot more smooth. In line tracking, the error is the distance of the robot away from the center of the line. This can be found 
by looking at the IR array readings in the Cospace robot. For PD control, the response is decided based on the size of the error and how much the error has changed. In other words, how far away from the center of the line is the robot currently? And also, how has the distance between the robot and the center of the line been changing across time? So what we want, what we want to do is we take the size of the current error and we multiply it by some factor, kp. And then we also take the current error minus the last error, in other words, the change in error, and we multiply it by some factor, kd. Now, there are four di different possible cases that we need to respond to. First is when the error is small and the error is not increasing. In this case, as you can see, the robot is in the center of the line and it's facing parallel to the line. In this case, we would want the response to be small. In other words, we don't want the robot to turn left or right a lot because it is going to go straight. In the second case, we see that the error is big but the error is not increasing. As you can see, the robot is not at the center of the line. However, it is traveling parallel to the line, which means that the error is not changing. In such a case, we would want a medium response. We will want the robot to turn to the left quickly enough so it can go back to the center of the line, but not too much because it might overshoot and instead reach the left side of the line instead. In the third case, is when the error is small, but the error is actually decreasing. As you can see, the robot is at the center of the line, so the error is small. However, we don't want the robot to keep moving straight, because if it keeps moving straight, then it's going to overshoot and hit the left side of the line instead. What we want is for the robot to turn right by a medium amount instead, so it will end up moving parallel to the line. In the fourth case, is when the error is big, and the error is also increasing. As you can see, the robot is on the left side of the line, so the error is big. And what's worse, the error is going to keep increasing, because the robot is facing away from the line. In this case, we want the response to be big, so the robot can quickly turn right and go back to the line. Another method that I want to share is to accelerate slowly to reach the top speed, instead of commanding the robot to run at a very high speed immediately. The advantage is that it will make the robot run a lot more smoothly. Otherwise, if I were to command the robot to immediately run at base speed of 95, the robot would often jerk to the side and move in a very unstable way that often ends up going off the line. The logic for acceleration is very simple. If the current speed is smaller than the targeted maximum speed, then increase the speed by 1. Otherwise, don't change the speed. A few tips for debugging is, I start off with the robot at a very low base speed of 30 when I'm starting off the coding process. So I first try to make the robot complete the map. When that is successfully done, then I go on and try to increase the base speed. This saves me a lot of time in my debugging process because I can have the guarantee that any issues that arise during the speed up process occurs only because of the increase in speed which causes the decrease in stability and not because my code's logic has inherent flaws. I think I have achieved rather commendable results. If I were asked to solve the same challenge again, I would see if I can find even more ways to let the robot run faster. I have learned from coding a Cospace robot with the GUI programming offered by Cospace Robotics that coding isn't just about the syntax and the libraries and the functionalities of a coding language. What's more important is the pseudocode, the flowcharts, and the logic behind your code. I have gained experience on what to look out for when approaching a challenge task and how to look out for solutions. I have also gained enjoyment in being able to participate in robotics activities despite being in the middle of a global pandemic where most of my other activities are restricted. I hope everyone gets to enjoy the process of coding in Cospace Robotics and I hope everyone can take away as much knowledge and experience away from Cospace. 
But most importantly, don't forget to have fun. Thank you.